Welcome to Faith Revival, Holiness Synagogue Church in Parish. I'm your host, Minister and Prophet in Jim Hayes. Let us begin in prayer. Father, we love you. Thank you, Father. You want us to be a part of your life. And it comes through the will, the mediator, the Messiah, the Spirit of God himself in the flesh, Yeshua. We recognize Yeshua as Shaddai as well. And then when we read about Shaddai in, in the Word of God, it's, it's really re referring to the other nature of Yeshua. And so we thank you, Father. We praise you, Father. Oh, yeah. We thank you and praise you, our Abba, yeah, for all you do for our lives. You want to be pleasing. You understand that we're, as long as we're in this flesh, that there'll be stuff to go on. But we need to go forth and, and trust that you have the best interest for each of our lives. I pray that each of us be a Noel in our hearts for one another. And aloha, because the, the, the whole aloha is very powerful too, of understanding of aloha as power of, of equipping people, of blessing people. When you say aloha, same thing with shalom. Shalom is that way too. When you say shalom to one another, sometimes people greet the child with shalom and, and they're going the other way with shalom as well as aloha and noah. Those three words need to ring in our hearts with everything in it, I pray. Amen. All right, and today we're going to do some more Ezekiel. Ezekiel, Yahweh Bo, Majesty come, Majesty come. I want you to be careful in the way we, this is the meaning of Yahweh, is Majesty, but I want you, when you pray to them, pray to either Yah or Yahweh, them combined together within that name. But it means Majesty. Yes, and uh, we're supposed to pray in his name, not in the titles or meanings of the, the names, but for the understanding of what's coming and going here. Majesty come. Yahweh Bo. Bo means come, you know. And uh, so we're going to go to the book of Ezekiel 15, 1 through 8, 16, 1 through 63, and it's not tremendously long even though it says 1 through 63 of six of 16 and 1 through 8 of 15 of Ezekiel amen but the word of Yah came to me human being why should the word from the great vines be better than some other kind of wood then some of the branches that one might find among the trees of the forest it's the wood cannot be used to make anything, not even a pen on which you hang a pot. So now it is thrown into the fire of fuel. The fire consumes both the ends of it. The middle of it is, is singled. And it is used now for making something. And then it was the whole, it was good for nothing so how much less when the fire has consumed it and it's a single will it be used for making something so yeah elohim says this like the wood from the vine among the trees of the forest which i can consign to the fuel of the fire so i give those living in Jerusalem, and I will set my face against them, and they will have escaped one fire, but the fire will consume them yet. When I set my face against them, you will know that I am Yah, and I will make the land desolate because they have uh, dealt tr so treacherously, says Yah. So when you deal treacherously with one another and God, then you're being consumed with a, a, a foreign fire that is it's not going to be good spiritually for you or naturally. And this is what God's saying. You have done this. You act treacherously with one another and treacherously with 
the living God. And you can't do that in the Spirit of God. You can't do that. The word of, of, of Yah came to me, human being, make Jerusalem realize how disgusting her practices are. Say that Yah Elohim tells Jerusalem, by origin and birth, you are a land of uh, Canaan. Your father was an Amori, and your mother was Hittai, as for your birth. On that day where you were born, nobody cut your umbilical cord, washed you in water, clean you off, rubbed salt um, on, on you and wrapped you in clothing. No one sees you had enough pity on you to do any of these things for you. No one had compassion on you. Instead, you were thrown into the open field in your own filthy on that day you were born. I passed by and I saw you there. This is an allergy, okay? I passed by and I saw you there, swallowing in the, your own blood. As you lay in, the, in your, the blood, I, I said to you, live. Yes, I said to you, live. And this is really, um, this analogy is um, going to, if you haven't picked it up yet, about the cross too, in a lot of ways that Yeshua died upon. And I, I know some of my brothers might get offended, but it, it is, okay? And uh, you need to realize it too. As you laid in the blood, I said, live. I will increase your numbers just as like a plant growing in the field. And you did increase. You developed and you reached puberty. And, and breasts appeared and, and your hair grew long. For you were naked and exposed. Again, I passed by you, looked at you, and saw that your time had come, the time for, for love. So I spread my cloak over you to cover your private areas, entered into covenant with you, says Yah Elohim, and you became mine. And then I bathed you in water, washed the blood off of you, anointed you with oil. And also I clothed you with with abortments of, and gave you fine leather sandals to wear. Put a fine linen headband on your head, covered you with silk, and I gave you jewelry to wear, bracelets on your hands, necklaces on your neck, and I ring, the ring for your nose, because they used to give a ring on their nose. Now it's on the hands. Earrings for your ears and beauty crown for your head. Thus, you you were decked out in gold and silver. Your clothes were, were fine linen, silk, and richy embroiderments of clothes. You act a fi finest flour, honey, olive oil. You grew increasingly beautiful. You were fit to be queen. You frame spread among the nations because of your beauty, because it was perfect due to my having bestowed my own splendorness on you, says Yah Elohim. But you put your trust in your beauty and began prostrating yourselves because of your fame you saluted every passing by and accepted all comers. You took your clothing and used them to disort with uh, bright colors. And in high places you made for yourselves. And there you continue prostrating yourselves. Such things should not happen. And in the, in the future they won't. In the future they won't. Amen. You also took your beautiful jewels 
and made of my gold and my silver, and which I have given you, and made you yourself, and you made yourself male image, which you continue to prostrate yourself. And you took the bordermates of clothing and, and, and covered them, and set the olive oil and my fine flour, olive oil, and honey, and that I have given you to eat, and you set in front of them to give pleasure aroma. Thus it, it's how it was, says Yah Elohim. What were your sons and daughters whom you were born me? Took sacrifice from their the, the diversions, where you fornicate of yourself in casual manners, killing my children, uh, handing them over to selling them parts of these idols. And all these disgusting practices and fornications, you never remembered the, the conditions you were in when you were young, naked, exposed, and swallowing in your own blood. So after all these, this wickedness you have done, whoa, 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 to you, says Yahweh, you built platforms and made yourself high places and in every open space you built your high places in every street corner, turning your beauty into abomination, spreading your legs for every passenger by, multiplying and, and engaging a fornication over and over just to provoke me. So that now I have stretched out my hand over you, uh, determine your uh, ration of food and put you and at the mercies of those who hate you. The daughters of the Philistines who find you lewd, a behavior of revolt. Still, God satisfies you act like a whore, also like people of uh, Ashur. And yes, you are fornicators with them. And we're still not satisfied, and you multiply your acts of fornications with the lands of traders and the cash dems, and still we're not satisfied. You are so weak, ill, says Yah Elohim. You, you, and you do all these things and behave like shameful whores. And build your platforms and on every street corner, and make your high places in every open space. And yet, aren't that in like a whore? Because you have scorn and getting paid. Here is a wife who committed adultery, who does like every other prostitute, and you have given gifts to all your lovers and bribed them to come to you for all others. And place and and have sex with them, and yet you are a, a object of other women, fornicators, and, and you are solicitors, and you have paid them, and they don't pay you. You have objects, and all the right you you whoring. Listen to the word of Yah. Yah says. Because you're, you're filthy and you become poor, poor out of your private exposures through your acts of fornications with, with your lovers. And because of all these idols of your disgusting practices and because the, of the blood of your children, which you have gave them. Therefore, look, I am going to gather all your lovers to whom you have been so nice, and all the ones you uh, hated right along with all the ones you loved. I will gather them against you and all others in place and expose your private parts to them so that they will see you completely naked. And this is symbolically, this is what he's going to do in these end days again because they... they they worship all kinds of idols. America, get away from your idols and fornications against God and turn back to him. Canada, all your world, woe unto you, for you have done exactly what those scriptures have said here. And I will pr pronounce on you 
a sentence that applies to a woman who commits adultery or murder, and I will bring on you death, decree, fierce jealousy. Yes, I will, will hand you over to them, and they will make ruins of your platforms, tear down your high places, strip your you know, of your clothes, and take away your jewelry, and leave you naked and exposed for what you really done. That's what that represents. And they will also bring up the mob against you, and you will will stone you to death and, and hack you into pieces with the sword. And they will bring, uh, uh, burn your house and, and, and grounds, execute judgment against you in the presence of many women. And I will make you stop fornicating, and you will never again pray for lovers. He's, he's coming across, Father God is coming across as, as the husband of the earth right now. And he wants you to know that you've got to stop these things. He loves you. He's not only our, our God and our father, but he's also a, a husband to, the, to, to this earth, to everybody on it, no matter what you are. He's a, a symbolic husband to all of us. And he's also symbolic a brother, as you, you go on you know, in the Gospels, too. And I will make you stop fornicating. You will never again pay for your lovers. Yes, I will satisfy my fear against you. But after that, my jealousy will leave me. And I will claim down. Uh, calm down and no longer be angry, says Yah, because you didn't remember the condition you were in when you were young. But in, enrage me with all these things. Therefore, I will bring constantly your ways on your own head, says Yah Elohim. You uh, committed these uh, atrocities in addition to all of the other disgusting practices. Anyone who quotes Proverbs will uh, quote this proverb against you. Like a mother, like a daughter. Yes, you are, you are a mother's daughter who despise her husband and children and are sister of your sisters who despised their husbands and their children, and your mother was Hittite, and your father was a Imorite. Moreover, you, your old sister to Sharon, who lived at the left, and she and her daughters, and her youthful sister lived in, in your right, and Sodom and with her daughters, and you did not mere live by the ways and act according to the, their disgusting practice. But in a very short time, you act more corrupted than they all did in their ways. As I live, says Yahweh, your sister Sodom has not done neither she or nor her daughters as much evil as you have done. And your, you and your daughters... The crimes of your of your sister Sodom were pride and gluttonousness, and she heard the daughters were careless and um, um, compa not compassionate, so that they did not nothing to help the poor nor the needy. They were arrogant and committed disgusting acts before me. So that was the. The main sin of Son was they didn't take care of the poor and needy, and they 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 acted they hoarded their wealth. And there was a lot of other things, as you know, and they were arrogant and committed disgusting acts. There you go before me, so that when I saw it, I I I swept them away, and Sharon did not commit even half as many sins as you did, committing many more disgusting acts than your sisters. In fact, the compassion with all the disgusting acts you have committed, and they seeming 
seemingly innocent, but you too must bear the disgrace, for by the passing judgment that your sisters was innocent, through you have committed sins and whoring of them, they are shown to be more righteous than you. So ashamed, bearing the disgrace and the deserved of making your guilt of your sisters seem innocent. I will end your exile, the exile of Sodom and, the, and her daughters and the exile of Sharon and her daughters. The exiles of the captors of there among them. So that you can bear your own shame and express the disgrace of your uh, de deserve for all that you have been done and the show from them that feel in their own guilt. Your sister Sodom and, and her daughters of Sharon with with her daughters with return to their previous conditions. You will you and with your daughters will return to your previous conditions. And when you were so proud and you spoke contempt about your sister Sodom, because you have your own wickedness exposed, but now the daughters of Aram mock you, so do the, their neighbors, and the daughters of the Philistines on their every side. And I would and repulsed by you and you have brought it all on your own self who are deprived and disgusting practice says yeah for here is what yeah Elohim says I will do to you as you have done treacherously and and, and oaths and committed of breaking my covenant says yeah nevertheless I will remember the covenant I have made with you and with your with your your girl and with establishment and an everlasting covenant with you. And then you will remember then you will remember your be behaved and be ashamed of uh, of it as you received your older and youther sister and make them your daughters even through the covenant with you does not cover that. And I must reestablish my covenant. And I will reestablish my covenant with you. And then you will know that I am Yah. So that you will remember and be so ashamed that you will never open your mouth again. So so ashamed that will you be when I Forgive you, and you all of you, says Yahweh. So we need to all ask for forgiveness today. All the nations, all the nation, every nation, including America and Israel and Canada and Mexico, all the nation of the world, need to ask forgiveness. Because he is the husband of so he spelsed us and has given us life through his spirit Yeshua and we all have trembled on his word and we all have done things that we should have all the nations have done this you need to repent the nations that have come out of this treacherousness that they've done the nations that come out of this and take this word a solidness of their selves and they repent. God will bless that nation. But woe to all the nations that don't hear this message and this book. For they, they the judgment of God will be great upon those nations. So repent and turn away from your wickedness and turn to the living God that loves thee. That is the husband of the earth, of everything on the earth, of his children, and the king and the father, the savior, the, the breath of life and the, the Messiah and the, our Yeshua.
There you go, the Father. Turn away from your wicked ways and turn for the living God. He loves you enough to correct everybody on this earth, even this today. You have done many abominations, America, Canada, Mexico, Israel, all nations of the world. Woe unto you. Turn away from your wickedness and turn to the living God and ask for repentance. Allow the Spirit of God, the one that took on physical form, Yeshua, or else should I, to forgive you. You see, you see your heart. You see the hearts of the nation that want forgiveness, that want to that not stray from what is good no more. And the nations that, that repent, the peoples that repent, the towns that repent, the cities that repent, they will be under the blessings of God instead of their own foolish deeds that lead to, to the cursing of their own doings. Turn away from your wicked ways and God will hear from heaven and forgive you this day. For the living God loves you. I want you to understand what the word says. And what the word says is not just for the generation it's saying, but also it's a prophecy of today that needs to be addressed in our, our days. God loves you enough to correct you and love you and, and, and hold you and, and bring you out and take the, the wretched linings of, of, of evil off of you and the crown of folly off of you and bring the linings of righteousness around you and the crown of right of uh, right doings and goodness upon me. Take the the evil reign off of you and give you a reign of of love that he has for you today. For he loves you. He wants you to stop doing these things. You do, all nations. You blame each other, but you can't just look on your own selves for what you've done to your own self. You have to blame it on someone else. That's what Satan always does. That's one of the things that made him fall. One of them. The start of it anyways. Your nations need to own your own things. And you need to take that guilt and all that pain and all the, the garbage that you've done. And nail it to the cross of Calvary. And say, I'm not going to pick those things up anymore as a nation, as a people, as a tribe, as, as a state, a province, as a people, of a town, as, as a city. And do what is right now in God's ways. Do Yeshua HaMashiach. The Messiah, our, our um, El Shaddai. Amen. God bless you. Now I want to pray for those that have never got born again are filled with the spirit of Yeshua. There are some of you who are born again, quite a few of you, but you're not spirit filled. So you're like the unwise virgins. When it's time, you're not, spilled, you're not filled with the spirit of Yeshua, but you're born again. You haven't completed everything. You must be born again and spirit filled with Yeshua. It's time for both of them to happen in your life right now. Pray this prayer. And those that are not spirit-filled, pray it. Mean it with all your heart and say, I want all of you. I don't want, I want, I don't want this half. I want all the whole thing. Amen. Pray this prayer. Dear, dear God, Yah, Father, love you very much. Be, be the, the savior of, of my spirit, soul, and body. Acknowledge you as King and Father and Savior, O oh Yeshua. And thank you, Yeshua, for dying on that cross for us through the commands of the Father, God, and his heart on this. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Yeshua. Amen. Now I ask that you, you be spirit-filled with Yeshua today and that, and that and, and as well as being baptized in water symbolically uh, as, as a second witness. That you're all in. Amen. But I baptize you in the name of Yeshua. I baptize you in Yeshua. And, and may Yeshua be in you. 
I hope a glory guide you and that all the, the guardian angels be around you to help you, remind you to read the word, to, uh, to pray for people, to learn things, and, and remind you that, you know, things you need to do throughout the day. And we thank you, Father, and we praise you, Father, for all these things. May your holiness surround them. May your protection of love and, and, and may the gratitude arise up in their hearts and minds every day and as, as they learn to walk in the relationship and friendship and sanctification that you have for each of our lives. I bless them out now in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, our El Shaddai, amen. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Onus that brings peace, the past is onus that he doesn't have a number of complete peace be with you. Shalom forevermore. Shalom.